Okay, it looks like that's uh, most people have joined. It's slowed down uh, in, at any rate. So uh, I am uh, Ryan Bianchi, and I will uh, be today's meeting moderator. Welcome to the SR520 Motlake Project's November online monthly meeting. In the future, virtual room, we have Cheryl Webster, who is the communications coordinator with GRAM, and we have several WASHDOT members online who can answer questions if needed, including Steve Peer, who is the WASHDOT communications manager. Before I pass you off to Cheryl for our presentation, I would like to walk through a few housekeeping items. In an effort to reduce background noise and improve everyone's experience, all attendees will be muted today. You can adjust the volume by clicking on the audio settings. During the presentation, you're encouraged to engage with us. We invite you to submit your questions as they come to you. This is helpful so you don't forget them along the way. And you can send them through the Q&A box on your screen. If you would like to view closed captions during the meeting, click on the closed caption button at the top of your screen. These captions are generated by the Zoom application and we are not responsible for their accuracy. When you submit a question, we request that you send short, complete sentences. This will help us when reading out the questions during the Q&A portion of the event. Please do not use the chat button. We may not see your question if you submit it that way. Okay, and now I'll pass it over to Cheryl for our 520 Montlake project pr presentation. Thank you, Ryan. So like Ryan mentioned, we're gonna talk about some current and upcoming work, um, how to stay informed with the project, and then we will answer questions and comments at the end. So feel free to populate those in the question and answers box, and I will um, get to them with the rest of the team at the end of the presentation. So the project has three major components. First was the uh, new eastbound bridge structure. Second being the Montlake lid with the new HOV and bus lane and uh, new configure, newly configured on and off ramps. And then the third component we have been speaking about is the bicycle and pedestrian bridge, which connects the north and south pathways over top of 520. So we'll go through some of the major components of the project in a little more detail, give you some updates on um, status of these. So the first is the uh, transit canopies on the center of the lid structure. So many of you who travel through the area regularly will know that the HOV ramp and uh, HOV lanes down the center of the lid is now open. Uh, at the intersection of Mont Lake and the HOV lanes, there is transit canopies. These are shown in the left-hand picture uh, as a little kind of grid image boxes there. Perfect, thank you for highlighting. So on the north side of the roadway, there is a small uh, transit shelter we call transit shelter A or the North Plaza. And then on the south side, there's two larger transit canopy structures uh, with a plaza area. And then that wraps around to Montlake Boulevard as well. So those transit canopies are <clears throat> primarily all done. They're working on a little bit of um, electrical that's going into them currently. You can see on the right-hand pictures, some of the crews finishing off some soffit on the 29th there. Um, these canopies will then be in this whole area will be handed over to King County Metro. Uh, they are anticipated to put in some uh, fixtures such as you know, the, can the card scanning machines, those types of things. Uh, and do it some fit out of their own in this area. Uh, we do not have an update as to when these transit canopies will start accepting bus traffic, um, but stay tuned with King County Metro. I'm sure they will roll that out soon. So officially the pathways are all poured and complete on the project. Uh, so all of the trails and sidewalks are in place. Uh, we do have some relief saw cutting to do in a couple locations, uh, but the sidewalks themselves are all complete. 
the challenge we have when it comes to sidewalks is uh, it's a great pathway system across the lid and throughout the area and it intersects with a lot of our landscaping. So landscaping continues on the project and will continue through to mid-December. Uh, once all of the landscaping is complete, we will open up the rest of the pathways. If some of those areas complete faster than others, we will certainly be looking at opening uh, the paths uh, sooner than that. But um, for everyone's safety and for the you know, ease of um, not disturbing public transport, so not opening a path and then telling you we're going to close it the next day, uh, we are keeping those all closed so that we can access those areas and complete all of the uh, topsoil placement, bark placement, uh, in some cases grass, uh, other cases uh, shrubs and trees. So we will start to see a great increase of all of that plant life uh, throughout the trails and along those paths very soon. So one of the uh, major components is, of course, that bicycle and pedestrian bridge. So as many of you have known, that it has been uh, complete since July. The landscaping you can see in the left-hand picture there is all uh, complete and has all been planted uh, to that uh, in that uh, view. On the north view, which is more what you see on the right-hand picture, that's a picture of the outlook that looks out onto the lake. Uh, we just have a few more landscaping components to complete there, as you can see in the photo. Uh, also, some signage has to go into place there, and then it wraps down into a new pathway system connecting across the old OCR and to connect it to the uh, regional path across the lake. So though that area of pathway just got completed this last couple of weeks as we had to complete some additional drainage components in the area. Uh, right now, if you go over to that area, you'll see a lot of landscaping happening. So uh, we hope to open this structure along with the rest of the pass in December. So that pathway also connects, like I said, across the old OCR area uh, to Montlake Boulevard and then underneath Montlake Boulevard through the pedestrian tunnel connecting to Bill Dawson Trail. So you can see on the left-hand photo, uh, the yellow dotted line was how the old trail uh, used to move down on Montlake. Uh, now that has been reconfigured to the blue dotted line, uh, comes down on the east side of Montlake, and then you can access it um, under, uh, access Bill Dawson Trail, pardon me, underneath of Montlake. <clears throat> Let me go to the next picture. So this is all accessible through a staircase, as you can see in the left-hand photo and a ramp structure in the right-hand photo. And then you can see in the right-hand photo, the tunnel at the distance there. So the only work that needs to be completed in this area is some striping that needs to be done on the pathway. It's a very congested area between the tunnel and the um, pedestrian land bridge. So we will see some crews out there flagging the path completing some uh, li line striping down the middle of the path. This will define it in those congested areas and allow a better movement, safer movement for pedestrians and bicycles. Um, I will say that we've had a lot of comments regarding signage out there regarding this closure. Uh, all of the striping is weather dependent. And as we all see out there today, the weather is not great this week. So this uh, activity was planned for this week. Obviously, it's going to be pushed off. Uh, hopefully, we can get some good weather next week and complete that activity as soon as we have the proper window uh, for weather. So uh, that will shift. Uh, I'm sorry for any confusions that there was on the trail with signage. So I did allude to it a few minutes ago that uh, Mohai area uh, is... Uh, the last major area of the project to be completed. So on the right-hand photo, you can see up at the top of the photo is the outlook that we were looking at in the previous pictures of the uh, pedestrian land bridge. Over this past weekend, we moved in what has been described as a small mountain of topsoil. 
that's been placed in this area. And we've been putting into place these grass pavers, which you can see in the uh, on the pallets in the right hand photo and being placed in the left hand photo. So a large amount of landscaping occurs in this area, bringing up the level of the grade ex uh, quite extensively. Uh, we've also got these grass pavers in here where you'll see uh, sand being placed and then grass will grow in between that it's for maintenance vehicles um, to access that while still having a grassy surface. Uh, there's a lot of irrigation in this area, trees, um, and like I said, a lot of topsoil will be placed. So uh, this is the last area that our crews will touch as we exit the project um, prior to any punch list items. So this area we have been actively working on for several weeks and will continue for the next couple. So the other components that we are working on in the project um, are commissioning activities. And commissioning is testing of all of the systems. Those systems are, uh, it can include things like lighting, uh, fire systems, fire suppression systems, all structure, all systems that are uh, primarily underneath of the mall, like lid. Uh, we do have signals um, and that as well for testing. So to complete all that testing, we do have a series of single night closures that have been occurring and will continue to occur, incur, continue to occur through uh, December. So you can see on the right hand side some of those closures running November 19th, 20th, and 21st, and then uh, the beginning of December as well. Uh, and then we have a larger uh, extended weekend or extended night closure on December 14th for some uh, final commission activities. So we, as long as everything is working out well, we anticipate all this to be done by December 14th. So a lot has changed in the project as we begin to wrap things up. Um, in terms of the work, uh, what, you can, what you're going to hear and feel, the work hours still remain the same, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. on weekdays, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. on weekends and holidays. Um, Obviously there's no impact driving happening on this project anymore. And um, all of the activities done at night are being conducted under temporary noise variances issued by the city. We anticipate that there will be some uh, night activities happening up as we can, you know, finish off the small components and up in that Mohai area, as well as obviously those commissioning nights. Um, so those will all be completed under that temporary noise variance. Um, and then as always, crews can be working 24 hours a day, seven days a week throughout the construction. Turn it back to you, Ryan. Thank you, Cheryl. A uh, few moments, we'll get to the Q&A. Uh, just want to make sure that to remind you to send your questions our way. We, it looks like we have about six questions right now or comments. Um, if you can't see the Q&A box, try tapping your screen or moving your mouse and it'll appear again. Uh, when you submit your questions, please send them individually and try to keep them a sentence or two in length. Uh, questions that are too long or are specific to an individual can be difficult to answer. And uh, in a moment, uh, or uh, can we get it in, in the moment. And so uh, we may need to follow up with you offline later. All right, so let's take a look at the, how can you stay informed for the rest of the project? Uh, one of the quickest, most direct ways to have a question or concern addressed is through our 24 hour construction hotline. That number is on your screen, 206-775-8885. We also manage an email account that's checked weekdays where you can submit any of your non-urgent questions or concerns. Subscribing to our email lists or following us on X will ensure you stay informed uh, on any upcoming events or notable construction activities. You can watch construction progress in real time on our four cameras mounted in the project area. And the construction corner is updated frequently and has a map showing notable traffic impacts in the Mon Lake, Lake area. You can also find information on how we are managing construction effects like noise or vibration. And we encourage you to keep participating in events like you are today. Event information is shared through our email updates. 
if uh, so, we've arrived at our Q and A section, and uh, let's get to those right now. So the first one is uh, a comment about some uh, pooling water. Some water pooling is occurring on the sidewalk on the south side of East Lake Washington Boulevard due to the regrading of the parking strip, which can be cause which can cause slips and falls in case the water freezes in the winter. Can something be done about this? Thanks for your question, Santosh. Um, so we will pass this information on to our crews to take a look at a lot of the um, items such as this will be addressed during punch list if there is in fact a sloping concern on any of the sidewalks. Uh, so I will pass this location on to um, our team and we will look into that for you. Santosh, Santosh, if you could please follow up in the chat and specify if this is east or west of 24th or any other local road information, then we can make sure we get the correct location and have that checked out. All right. Uh, next up, we've got two traffic issues from Priscilla. Westbound 520 exit to Montlake Boulevard has a merging issue with potential for accidents. Carpool lanes off the lid turning right onto Montlake needs a no turn on red next to the traffic light. The lane lines for traffic turning right need to be wider or solid. Cars needing to turn left onto Hamlin Street have limited time to merge over into the left turn lane. Suggest a delayed green light or carpool lane. And then I will, I'll go ahead and read the next one too, and we can, you can uh, respond to both. So this is uh, left turn lane on Montlake at East Hamlin currently is a traffic light red. Could be, could the light be configured to blinking red or yellow arrow? Also the traffic light change currently is triggered off the traffic light at East Shelby. Can a light trigger be added at East Hamlin? Thank you for your questions, Priscilla. Um, so we will take the this information back to the city of Seattle who controls the light timing um, and have them you know, look at that signal timing a little bit better. I know they just recently made some changes to the northbound Montlake signal timing um, and how it connects with the right hand turn off of that ramp heading northbound. Uh, so I know that they have made recent adjustments on that. So hopefully we can see that that will be uh, improved. Um, we do recognize that that is a large move to move from the right-hand lane over to the left, turning on to Hamlin Shelby. So um, that can be a difficult maneuver if you're not in the right lane. Okay, we'll move on to Eddie Spear, who, uh, or sorry, uh, sorry, Leo. <laughs> uh, are we replacing the temp jersey barriers at the west side of the floating bridge? Uh, thanks for your question, Leo. We are complete with all the work out on the floating bridge. We did have some temporary barriers out there, and those have been removed. What is out there now is uh, final configuration. And I did skip Eddie Spear, I apologize. Uh, can anyone explain the parking signs placed along East Lake Washington Boulevard two weeks ago? Many of them contain a no parking any time as well as a two hour parking sign on the same spot. Others contain an arrow pointing perpendicular to the road. Thanks for your question, Eddie. I'm actually not familiar with the signage um, plan in that area, so I will take that information away and we will circle back with you on it. Okay. Uh, our, let's see, we got that one. Priscilla asks again, traveling south on Mott Lake over the lid, the far right lane can be used for both exits onto 520 West and 520 East. High traffic times, difficulty merging into the right lane to go east to 520. When will the overhead signage be added prior to the exits? Thanks for your question, Priscilla. We are currently putting up the last of the signage. Uh, if you walk in the area, you can notice a lot of it's 
actually sitting in that transit canopies type area right now. Um, so to answer your question about when the signage will be going up, uh, the rest of the signage will be going up in the next couple of weeks. Um, whether it is signage that is prior to the lid structure, I am unable to confirm. So um, we will take a look at that and see if there is anything additional that is to be added there. Eddie asks, what are the project elements that will not be completed by December 2024? Thanks for your question, Eddie. Um, we should have all of the landscaping, all of the pathways and all the roadways all complete by December. Uh, the activities that are going on in December are commissioning activities that I mentioned earlier in the presentation. Uh, so those are all testing activities and will um, carry through until all of the systems are functioning properly and we can ensure that it is all operational. Andy, this is Bryant with Graham. Just to add a, a higher level of detail to that, we will be doing landscaping and other punch list activities up to about December 13th, so mid-December. And then we would consider the project to not be under active construction after that point in time. All right, um, and this one uh, this is probably <laughs> more for, for watch not. I'll go ahead and read it out, but uh, uh, so sorry, it's not a Motley question, but near the Bellevue side of the 520 bridge, water from rain collects at the bottom part where the rise meets floating part of the bridge, both westbound and eastbound. I almost had an accident from deep water collected there. Can wash not check drainage? I can, I can answer this one, um, Ryan. This is Steve Pierre from Washington. I copied your question and I'm going to send it to our bridge maintenance facility um, to take a look at that. And Gail, um, I'm not sure if we have your contact information, but you can reach me at Steve, S T E V E dot Pierre, P E E R, two E's like Sealy, at W S D O T dot w a dot g o v and i'll i've already i'm going to send it to them as soon as this meeting ends and, and get an answer for you and thanks for for alerting us about that santos uh says thanks for the great landscaping what is unclear is who will be in charge of raking and removing leaves and mowing of the grass on the extended parking strip on the south side of east lake east lake washington boulevard is it homeowners or the city? Thanks for your question, Santosh. So long-term, uh, our understanding is, is that will be the uh, responsibility of the homeowners. Um, during our plant establishment period, we are in charge of maintenance of the new landscaping components on the project. Leo asks, the middle barrier at the west end of the floating bridge seems still to be temporary barriers. Yeah, understood, Leo. You know, the type of barrier, whether it's cast in place or whether it's what we call a type two or type F, uh, temporary barrier, which can be picked up with a crane and moved around on a truck, does vary on the structure. And some in some areas of those bridges, that barrier is pinned down to make it more permanent. In some areas, it cannot be pinned because of the structural elements beneath the barrier. Can't speak to exactly the intent or duration of the barrier that's there. What Graham can say is we have removed quite a lot of temporary barrier and we Graham does not have any more barrier scope in our contract in the area of the, of the bridge that you're speaking of. Elias asks, will the Bike pedestrian bridge still be closed until the December 13th date as work continues on landscaping, or will it be able to be open before that? Thanks for your question, Elias. Uh, currently, we will be keeping that bridge closed until uh, all of the landscaping is complete at the north end of the structure. 
And uh, Brandon uh, asked, does WashDOT coordinate with University of Washington event schedules, such as evening basketball games when planning bridge closures? Games often start as late as 8 p.m. on weeknights, making it challenging for fans to travel when the bridge closes at 9 p.m. Would it be possible to consider adjusting closure times on game nights? Thanks for your question, Brandon. Uh, we do do, when we put in a request for a closure, it goes to um, a division that looks at not only the Mont Lake area, but all of the closures and roadways within the whole city. Uh, so all of the sporting events over a uh, certain number of participants, as well as all of the other construction projects, road closures, uh, all come into play as to whether or not we're allowed to have road closures and what times we're allowed to take those. Um, larger sporting events in the university area often require that we um, and actually, I should say in Seattle in general, often require that we don't close roadways until two hours after the event. Uh, so that is all taken into consideration when we receive approvals for these closures. All right. This is uh, following up to the earlier conversation about uh, who's responsible for the maintenance of the parking strip. So we've heard previously on it. This is from Marjorie. We've heard previously on a Zoom update that the south side of East Lake Washington Boulevard would be maintained by the city. Roger, this is Brian with Graham. Uh, if there has been mixed messaging, we apologize. As far as uh, our construction contract, as Cheryl mentioned, we have a three year warranty period where our subcontractor will be maintaining all areas of new landscaping. And we suggest that any concerns about maintenance after that be taken up with the city because it's possible we have bad information uh, and it's definite that we don't have any ability to impact with that. So we'd be glad for you to, to forward that to the city. All right. And uh, this is the last one. So if anybody else has anything else, um, please get the in. Uh, so this is from Santosh, not a question overall. Thank you. With that, I think that's a good place to end unless we get some more questions in here. And we did, um, Santosh, we did receive your information regarding the pooling on the sidewalk, and we've taken that away for the team to take a look at. So uh, we will follow up with that uh, out in the field. All right, and I don't see any additional questions coming in. So thank you for your for participating in our monthly meeting. If you don't feel like you got the answer uh, you needed and have follow-ups, let us know and we will we'll get back to you. Uh, I think uh, there was at least one person who will hear back from Steve Peer. And tomorrow you will receive a follow-up email with our 24-hour hotline number and our email address in case you were unable to note them throughout the presentation. Cheryl, is there anything else that we want to make sure that we mention before we sign off? Uh, no, I will follow up with Eddie Spear, I believe it was, with the questions regarding signage. All right. Seeing no more uh, questions, then uh, that's it. We appreciate you joining us this afternoon and hope you have a great rest of your day.